So as Laura said, the, the horse is on, on its way to Grand Prix. And we just show you now a little bit of progression from the work, what you saw yesterday with a five and six year old. And uh, with this one, he's got a lot, of, a lot of talent for everything. He's got a very nice shot, a very good canter, very good walk. Um, his main problems that we are still working on is a bit the balance. He can, he can still tip a bit. Uh, to the forehand, and we just try through, through through gentle exercises and gymnastics to build the strength that he can uh, carry more from the hind leg and not help hold him together with uh, sheer sheer strength. And the standard exercises I al always call uh, shoulder in the mother of dressage, and shoulder in, travers, l'envers are uh, collecting exercises and um, suckling exercises at the same time. So Laura does a very nice shoulder in. As you can see, important is that the rider sits with the horse, with the seat, but also with the shoulders, that the, horses, the rider's shoulders are parallel with the horse's shoulders in the shoulder in, the horse looks between the two ears and doesn't look, you see many riders looking straight ahead all the time. If you do a shoulder in, you look where the horse looks. If you do a travel, you look where the horse looks. And if you do a half pass, you also look where the horses look with your eyes and also with your whole body and your shoulders. If the rider now would look straight ahead to see, it would look wrong and the horse feels it wrong. And this supports the sideways movement. And that's how we basically start almost all of our horses. A little bit of stretching, then shoulder in travel, raw bear, then shadow half passes, just a little bit forward. That's it. And because it's not so natural for him, for him to constantly sit on the hind legs, we give him quite frequently short breaks so that the muscles always stay supple and uh, well supplied with, with blood and oxygen. Otherwise, they, they get hard and solid. And if a muscle is not uh, um, supple, it reduces in volume. If you want to build up muscle, you have to give uh, um, constant, constant breaks. So this now helps the horse stretch out. We still want that the back comes up so that the hind legs stay active and step under, but we want that the back s uh, stays up and doesn't hollow. And if you ride now the wrong rhythm, too fast, too much forward, then the front legs can run a little bit away from the hind legs and the back hollows, and that would be um, not very productive. At the walk, we allow the horse to switch off for a moment, mentally and physically, but we still want it active. We don't want him to fall asleep, we just want him to relax for a moment. So and again, you can see he's got a nice active walk, good over track, clear four time beat, And for him and for Laura, it's the first time that they appear together in public. So I'm, I'm very happy that he behaves well and seems, I actually think he quite enjoys it. Okay, we do, Laura, if we do maybe just a little bit of another few minutes stroke work and just show that you ride forward and then you just collect him for two, three strides and then ride out again. All we want now is that the hind legs stay active and don't slow down. Because that is already the very, very early stage of half steps. Just that the horse keeps the rhythm and the most dangerous thing is to ask in the, in the, in the early stage,
to ask too much, too many steps at a time, and the horse starts getting slow behind, loses the rhythm, and then gets worried and loses confidence. So we rather do a few less steps, but the horse starts enjoying it, a lot of praise. Whenever he, he does what we, uh, what we ask of him that is difficult, we give a lot of praise. So, shorten, 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 and out. Good. And then we can gradually ask for what Laura just did now, but, and ride out, and then ask again. Now, if you do that, shortening, ride out a few strides, and that's it, and again. And out, very good. This might take a little bit longer, but the end result will be a horse that piaffs happily, hopefully, maybe we can show you another time, that he can do then 12 to 15 steps, steps happily on the, on the spot. Good, and out, very good. Okay, and now to, to reward him for that collecting exercise, a little bit of opening up, a little bit forward, long side or diagonal, whatever you like. And again, prepare it so that the hind legs, the front legs don't run away from the hind legs. Good. That's something, again, he didn't find so easy to start with, um, or, you had, or you had an awful lot in your hand. And now he comes to the point that Laura can give with your hand when she goes forward and uh, I think another six months and they will be much more spectacular. Very nice passage, plenty of cadence, and still always a forwards tendency. That's the important thing in, in all the very collected work, that you still have the feeling the horse is going somewhere. The Piaf, even if it's on the spot, you allow it just that half step, half, hoof, half a hoof width forward, and it will look a much better Piaf than the one that's forced on the spot. When you ride a pirouette, it's the same thing. It should be small, the strides have to be short, but it still should look that the horse is moving forward. Good, and out, Laura, that's good. Okay, now let him stretch and give him a short break. So when, when you see this work, you maybe understand why it can take a little bit longer, because when it does it so nicely, one is very much tempted to ask for more. And um, it, it's very important that rider and trainer have the uh, restraint to say, okay, it's getting, it's getting better, it's getting there, but I don't ask the impossible at the moment. And what he does now, he couldn't do four weeks ago. So we are in a really steep uphill curve at the moment. So uh, we are very happy about that. Next thing is we'll do a bit of canter work. And uh, again, a horse with a good basic canter um, is a free gift but then we have to start managing the counter. When you saw Farouche earlier today, she's got the most spectacular counter one can imagine. And now it's a big responsibility to rider and trainer to manage that counter, start making it a little bit smaller without destroying it. No panic, no power cut or anything, it's, we carry on as, as planned. So in the, in the canter work, Laura, if you want to start cantering on a, on a circle maybe for a moment, and ride him a little bit open, a little bit forward,
And then we do basically the same thing what we did yesterday um, with Christian and, and, and Pammy, just at a different level. Every time Laura crosses the center line on a circle, she brings him back a little bit and then rides out again and out. And we do that maybe on two or three circles and eventually we ride almost on the spot on the center line. Keep him straight in himself, just a fraction of length bend. Good. And next time, ask for a bit more on the spot. Good, and out. And then down the center line or down the three-quarter line. And we do the same thing on a straight line, but it's more difficult for the horse. So you just sink a fraction shoulder four, and then bring him a little bit back, and out again. And again. He thought he was halting for a salute, maybe. <laughs> and here, the counter quality is always the most important thing. We must lose that. If we lose the counter quality, we have asked too much. The straightness is the second thing. But the counter quality, we never want to lose. And the rider feels it when the counter quality gets, gets lost and everybody watching can see it. So we don't want to come to that point. But we, the way we ask more and more is that we ask for a bit more collection and maybe we ask for a stride more. And a couple of weeks later we, we ask for another stride more on the spot. And that is a, the perfect preparation also for, um, for pirouette work. When the horse has learned to, to come back and do short period canter type strides on a circle and then on a straight line, only then we start this period work. And out. Okay, next long side, same thing, but one a little bit more connected. Really on the spot. Good and out. Okay, I would do that again and give him a chance. We realize he wants to break, so we don't push him that he doesn't break. We give him a chance to break, and then he gets a little smack. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, and out. And for that sort of work, it's best to have the whip in the outside hand that you can support the outside hind leg. And out. Very nice, Laura. And all these exercises we did are just for this result to be able to ride a pirouette easy without pressurizing the horse and we made the horse capable of doing what we require. Yeah. Bring your inside shoulder with him. That's it, very nice and out, good. Good. Now we do a half pass, a canter, now that we are well prepared for that. Front end lead, no, just come again. Almost every horse has a tendency to one side to bring the quarters more in. It's a balancing. So lead the, let the shoulders lead a bit, that's it. It's very important when you later come to the zigzag that the horse has learned to lead fractionally with the shoulders 
and not have the quarters leading. That's churches sit at, especially the church at sea can see that, and they don't like that. It looks very wrong. Um, Laura, if you maybe do. Um, oh, have you got your own ideas? <laughs> I'm a commander. I've got the mic. So. <laughs> Um, just, just do a baby zigzag. Just showing how important it is to prepare the changeover. The horses tend to get a bit hectic because it, it's, it's not an easy exercise. So it's very important to do it quietly and to start with to take time for the changeover. Arrive for the last two strides, push the quarters over a little bit more and then, have the, then it's easier to have the front end leading into the new direction and it's easier for the horse to find the balance. So um, it is a difficult exercise, but if a, uh, um, a zigzag is produced in balance and in harmony, it, it looks fantastic. So we don't want to do one, three, six, six, three like in the Grand Prix, we just, the emphasis now is only on quality canter, front end leading, quiet change over, correct change, we don't count the steps, very nice, bring them back a little bit. So, that looked very nice, don't have to do it again. And now I would say, if you do um, ride a little bit forward, in between, always refreshing the pace a little bit, um, the horses love you for it. Good. And then Laura, maybe start with a few threes, whenever you're ready. Good. Now make sure that he keeps the impulsion in the changes without running away with the front leg. So a little half hold, get him on the hind leg, right forward but no, don't let it all out. Well, not bad. Now, I would say very nice actually. And whenever you're ready, we do a few ones. Once we only just started to do that again, because of the balance wasn't good enough. And enough. Okay, very good. And we do it again. Important is that he keeps the forward momentum in the, in the ones without running away, without losing his balance. Forward. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. Okay. As you can see, he does very nice changes. The ones are getting really quite good, but to ask five more would be at the moment asking too much, so we don't do it. I'm pretty sure the way he's progressing at the moment, Laura found the key to him now. And, and he is physically able to carry more weight and, and to offer more. Um, I'm sure that we get the, the ones in, um, I think, more a matter of weeks now than, than months to get, uh, uh, get the 15 ones. And that is possibly one of the, the most important um, tips that we can give all those who train, train horses and, and, and want to make progress with their horses is you have to, to allow the horse to dictate the pace of the training. Um, it, it's so easy to see talent or feel talent and then you want too much straight away. You don't want to, to leave it too long 
and uh, then you don't make progress. You have to challenge the horses a bit, and you have to challenge yourself. But um, not many horses have been spoiled in taking it, taking it sometimes a bit easier, but too many horses have been spoiled in asking too much too soon. And he is a horse that is willing to perform, but he has to be physically able to do what we ask of him. And this strength doesn't, that doesn't build up overnight. It takes time. Okay, Laura, what else would you like to do? Or any special, any special requests that Laura should do again, or do something different, or... I've got my hearing aids on, so you can shout. I might, <laughs> I might get it. No. Okay, Laura, then I would say, uh, how are we with the timing? What I would like to do is just show a little bit put together, Laura, a little bit a nice shot, a little bit of an extension, a half pass, then a little bit of David Piaf passage, and, and then a, a tiny bit of canter work. Just that it all flows into each other, uh, one movement into the other, and, um, and we can enjoy watching it. Good, now you've got it, good. Again, what we just saw, that transition from passage to canter is not an easy one for most horses. Front end. Keep it big, keep it big.
Good, very good. Just do, do a nice walk. Hmm? Yeah, it's getting tired. Okay. No, that was good. Um, you don't wear, want to wear you out. You have another job to do. But it was nice to see that you can do flying changes without the horse doing a handstand all the time, like Christian yesterday. <laughs> Okay, I think that'll do, and I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, sorry that you had to put up with me, but uh, modern technology.